All right, we're back at my bow shop living room here. So I'm going to go over some things, what I do to get ready for hunting. I'm going to get all my hunting arrows loaded up into this Phoenix right here. <clears throat> and I'm just going to go over some things that come to mind about bows, especially these Oneidas. So this here bow, I just went through it. It was making a ridiculous popping noise. And I stripped it down. And I was wiggling stuff, wiggling the cams, and I talked to uh, people at Oneida. I mean, it wasn't really any excessive play from what they say, but I don't. I think it's fine when I wiggle them back and forth. That plays normal. Just keep that in mind if you run across that. Uh, what I did do, took all these off, loosened the saddle screws. I oiled the piss out of the hinges. And Toots is over there staring at me because I'm talking to you fellow bow hunters. Um, then I put it back together. Keep your saddle screw loose, bury your limbs, then check your alignment of the bow. If that's all good, tighten them screws up on your saddles. I backed it out. I got my marks on here around about, I'm at 56 pounds now. Yeah, I, I know in previous videos I change crap all the time. I don't know, it's just a chronic bow problem. Just so just ignore what I do and then do do your own thing. Got about 56 pounds. I drew this sucker back and it popped like the whole bow just broke in half. And then after that it never done it again. And you, I'm pretty sure my problem before is one of these limb pockets weren't seated and it was just hovering in there and it was just rocking back and forth, maybe something wasn't seated right. So you want to keep an eye on them limb pockets. But I haven't got a peep out of this thing. I just shot it like 30 times, zero to 80 yards, and it's shooting good as long as I do what I'm supposed to do. So these things are pretty much bulletproof. You just got to take care of them like they're your baby, and they'll take care of you. So this bow is a short. I have the number 12 modules in and I broke the tails off. And it is a super smooth draw and it breaks over at the top, which the G modules will give you that too. But the G's feel a little more aggressive. These feel just a hair bit smoother. And I like them, They're, it's just smoking. At 56 pounds, 56 point whatever pounds on my scale out there. And, um, I've got the flipper rest on there. My knock point to the bottom of the knock point from where your arrow sits on the rest is a half an inch. And I got my high capacity offensive band quiver on there and we're gonna load it up. Okay, and I got the Sever 1.5s. I would have to zoom in, but she's busy in there with our groceries and, and making stuff and just loading up goods to survive on. So what I do, I get your new broadheads. These have that little set screw. You can put them in there to shoot them, to practice with them. There's no point. There's no point in doing that whatsoever because there's nothing there. To, it's just like a field point. There's hardly anything there. So why practice with it? It's pointless. Keep them set screws out, otherwise your blades ain't gonna open on these. And I just kick each blade out. Make sure that sucker feels like it shaves hair. And then since I'm a cheapskate, I shot, I shot four deer with one seven. I'd take the blades out and I'd just kind of pound them straight on my, on my vise out there and uh, sharpen them up and, and drag them across leather to polish the edge. And I'd just, just blow them through deer. They're tough. Let me grab my quiver here. I got my big back quiver from when I used to shoot traditional. There's Cloverdale pin, the Cloverdale Traditional National, 2008. So I got a bunch of arrows made up here. And these are all gold tip. These are gold tip 340s. 
and they're the cheapest bottom of the barrel I can find. Gold Tip Warriors. 340, 100% carbon. So, you know, usually when I'm going through this, I'll find the best looking lucky arrow. That one looks good. This, this is going to be number one. And I'll screw that dude on there. Just check your heads. Make sure they feel sharp. What are you going to do with some of the stuff? Are you going to mess with it or are you going to put it away? And with these, you know what I'll, I'll, I'll do too? Let me see. Where's my, my little speedy sharp? This here Speedy Sharp is awesome. It's a good all-around sharpener. It has a little carbide uh, insert on it. On these severs, I'll just lightly drag the point there. On these, there's one, two, three, four, five. There's, there's six edges when you spin it. And you can almost sharpen these little edges just like it's a miniature broadhead. I just sit there and think of every possible theory for cutting and fail proof, fail proofing I can think of. Yeah, that sucker's nice. Just drag it across there lightly. And these, these severs are titanium ferrules. But carbide will make them nice. I don't know if that's going to zoom in or anything. It probably ain't. Whatever. You guys get the point. And usually I'll like to take them wings and put them this way because I'd like to try to keep everything out of my side picture. And I shoot cock feather out. So that's it right there. There's number one. Toots, here's the arrow. It's going to put down the big one. Okay. She's not as excited as I am. All right, for this second one, I'll, uh, I'll drop in a, a red lighted knock just for that visual light of the arrow whenever I want to put that in. You know what I mean? No? Got a red nocturnal lighted knock. Just check everything. Just freshen up those a little bit. It don't take much. Just get every little cutting surface. Give it an edge. And these are the 1.5s. I don't know if I ever said that or not. Sever 1.5s. Now for this last arrow, well I have I got one more spot left. These are all kill arrows for mainly for deer. So I have one spot left for a broadhead. And what am I gonna do? Hang on, just a second. Another stash of stuff. So I got here's this. Here's an old rage I got on here just for if I see a Kyla, I might switch to it. I got the uh, 
for this, I'm going to screw on this old Grim Reaper. This is just for coyotes or something. I mean, these look cool and they're awesome, but they ain't going to out penetrate one of these severs or a fixed blade. Are they Tootsie? I'm loading this up so I can spend lots of hours away from you in the wilderness, okay? Good talk. And uh, this looks like a good flue to put on here. I got this old, uh, I'm going to change it out. It is a little small game broadhead backer. And I, some of them I run backwards, that way they kick up in the grass or whatever. But I'm going to put it the right way for when Mr. Squirrel steps out or something, I'll penetrate the beast. That old ragged rain down flu will just go, we'll put it, we'll put it here on the outside. And then, Did I cut that mother down? This is an old one I lost. And we'll replace this one too, if I can. Holy crap. This is all rusted. I found this arrow out in the woods that I shot at something one day. And I can't get it. So we're just gonna, we, I, I'm just gonna stick it in there. It'll be good enough for who it's for. Okay. And here's a real old like arrow broadhead, A-E-R-O, I think that's what they were, or a satellite, might have been a satellite. I'll take that off, put it where it goes. Now you guys stick around. I'll show you what other broadheads I use too here in just a second. So we're loaded up with severs. I'll put a field point on this. Get out of there. And you're going to hear background noise because this is real life. And I'll put two field points in here for practicing. Because when I walk to the woods, if I'm not near my hunting spot, I'll pick out a leaf, try to shoot it, or whatever. Whatever I see. And this is a gold tip Hunter 340 that I've abused a lot. I'm just going to Take this off here and put a field point on it. All 125 grain heads. My bow is ready. It's loaded to the max. more I can say about that besides it's ready to shoot this big old buck that hopefully I get to see at some point during the season. So I'm going to hang it up here and I'll show you a few broadheads that I like to use throughout the season. Okay here's a here's a couple couple heads I like to use. I got the box of severs. I got a few of them left. I got some extra blades which I always salvage them. I use them until they break. So here's a here's a 125 grain cheap shot. I put those on, shoot rabbits with them. 
Let's see here. I got I got both squares, Allen wrenches. I use these to change the brace height on the Oneidas or change the string. It is an one inch piece of PVC pipe. Yeah, I know you can buy the right tool, but that's the right tool too. Anything can be the right tool. I have uh, some slick trick magnums. Here's some slick trick magnums. That's one of the toughest four blade heads, best flying broad heads ever. Here's a Muzzy Trocar 125 grain. Shot a bunch of deer with them. And they all work good. They work really good. And my wife, Tootsie, she uses the Magnus Stingers. Them are good heads. Nice two blade with a bleeder. And here I have some Slick Trick Grizz Tricks. Big old hole, inch and a quarter hole. And you know, that's about it. Let me, uh, let me show you something. Probably won't be able to pull out a 12 for, for nothing. I don't really want to do it on any, anything else. Anyway, when I say I break the tails off, if you have about a 28 inch draw and you're shooting a short, or maybe it even work with a medium, get your module in, in the Oneida. Right there. Just hold your module and break that tail off. You don't need it. When you keep that tail on, it gives it a lot of, uh, actually, well, a lot of, a lot of no let off. It makes it feel more like a traditional bow, recurve long bow. Gives it no let off. And these days, I like let off. I used to shoot really good with my Navajo long bow, and I had an old Shakespeare recurve and a Bear Super Kodiak. Put down some good deer with them bows. That'll about do it. I got one bow ready for hunting. Um, keep you guys posted on what happens. Anything you want to see or know, let me know. I'll try to answer questions. And, you know, if you're into making your own strings, I use 452X and uh in a 20 24 strand string and this is bcy power grip serving this is black on the end loops i like to use the green crown serving because it's slick and really strong brown old crown serving yeah well close up my bow shop. This little bow shop's been around since I was, before I was born. It used to go on the, to the outdoor tournaments when my grandma and grandpa used to shoot outdoors for bear archery. Outdoor and indoor. Pretty neat. It's an old Fenwick 5.6. I wish I could find another one of these. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you out in the yard, maybe. I might uh, go try to stalk some squirrels here in a little bit, but that'll be another video.